Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with a recommendations video, and this is kind of different than the other recommendation videos I've done. Today I'm going to be recommending some adult books for young adult readers. Now let me just explain what I mean by that a little bit. So all of the books that I'm going to be recommending today are all adult novels that I think are really great transitional books if you are just getting into reading adult and if you tend to read mostly YA. One of the most common things I see on Twitter, on Instagram, and on booktube is people talking about how they're afraid to to kind of explore the adult genre. Most of these people say that they tend to read mostly YA and they don't really know where to start when it comes to adult and they don't really know if they're going to like the books. They might be too complicated or too intimidating and these are all sentiments that I completely understand. When I was only reading YA, I felt very much the same about adult books. I was really afraid to read them and I had no idea where to start and I just didn't know if I was going to like them. But as I got older and my reading tastes changed, it just became kind of a natural thing for me to pick up some more adult novels and I still obviously very much enjoy young adult and read it all the time. So because of all this, I decided that I would put together a list of some of my favorite adult novels and also some adult books that I think are really great transitionally when you're going from reading YA to wanting to explore more of the adult category. So I have seven books to recommend to you all today, and without any further ado, let's just get into them. The first book I have to recommend is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is a fairly popular book, and I've talked about it on my channel now several times. It's one of my all-time favorite books, but I'm putting it on this list because I think it is one of like the quintessential transitional young adult to adult novels. <laughs> Victoria Schwab herself has also talked about how some people would consider her to be a crossover author, which I will get into a little bit more because I have another one of her books on this list. But a lot of people will read her books and they don't know if they fit into the adult category or the young adult category, and I will tell you how to know that. <laughs> when she writes her books under the name V. E. Schwab, that means it's one of her adult books. And if she writes it under the name Victoria Schwab, it means it's one of her young adult books. But this book follows the story of these two grad students named Victor and Eli, and they are working on their graduate thesis, and their thesis is on the existence of EOs, or extraordinary people. Eventually they start experimenting with how to create EOs and figure out how to do it, and then that leads to a discord in their relationship, and then the story takes place over two different timelines. So we get the timeline while the two of them are still in grad school, and then we also get a timeline 10 years later where we get to see the aftermath of everything that happened in the first 10 years. But the reason that I include this book on this list is that thematically I think it aligns with a lot of themes that are present in young adult. This story is really about morality and the line between good versus evil, what really is good and what really is evil, which is something that's really present in a lot of young adult and I think really relatable to a lot of teenagers as well as adults. This was one of the first adult novels that I read and truly enjoyed and kind of what made me want to explore more of it myself. Self. So I think it's just a great stepping stone in the sci-fi fiction genre if you're trying to go from YA to adult. The next book on this list is actually a series by, once again, Victoria Schwab, and that is The Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. Like I said, Victoria Schwab is a great crossover author, so she writes a lot of books that are thematically very relevant to the young adult category, but then the characters are usually older, so that gives her the liberty to explore more adult themes as well. The Darker Shade of Magic trilogy is a fantasy series that takes place in this world where there are four different parallel versions of London. And we follow around our main character named Kel, who is an Antari, essentially a magician who has the ability to travel between these parallel Londons. One day he gets into a bit of trouble when he accidentally comes across an object that he should not have, and then it leads to a whole slew of problems. This is one of my all-time favorite series. I love the characters, I love the themes, I love her writing so much. And to me, this series is really my adult Harry Potter. You have this group of characters that you fall utterly in love with and you're rooting for the entire time, but they're all morally gray and very complicated people. You're exploring a bit of those more young adult themes that have to do with like romance and relationships and kind of discovering who you are and where you belong. But then there are some of the more adult themes where it talks about morality and it talks about some of the politics in this world. And so there's just like a good flow between the two. This is definitely my number one recommendation recommendation fantasy series if you're trying to get into adult fantasy. I think it's absolutely perfect if you want to explore more of that. Her writing is incredibly concise, so it makes everything very, very clear and it's not confusing at all. So if you're looking for new adult fantasy to explore, 
this would be my number one recommendation. The next book or series, again, on my list is another fantasy series, and that is The Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. This was the very first adult fantasy series I ever read, and I was so, so intimidated, partially because of the size, and partially because adult fantasy really does seem terrifying. <laughs> but then I picked up this trilogy, and it completely changed my outlook on adult fantasy, and now I just want to read all of them. <laughs> Essentially, it takes place in a post-war world where the villain has won and now he is the ruler. And because the Lord Ruler, as he is called, is in power, there are people who are being oppressed, people who have been enslaved, and the world is not in a good place. The story follows this team of people who are trying to take down the Lord Ruler, and then this other girl who ends up joining them named Vin. In this world, there is also magic, and the magic works in a very, very unique way. So not everybody has magical abilities, but those that do are called mistlings. And the way that magic works is that you have to consume certain metals, and then those metals can manifest as powers. And then a very few number of people actually have the ability to consume all of the range of metals, and then use all of those powers instead of just having one. And they are called Mistborns, hence the name of the series. <laughs> the world in this series is so complicated and has so much depth to it. It is unlike any other fantasy series I've ever read. But the best thing is that it's not confusing at all. Even though these books are huge, they take me about like two days to finish just because I get pulled into this world and then I can't leave because it just makes you forget everything about reality because you're just living in here while you're reading this. The reason I think it has a lot more adult themes is that it's very, very political in ways that a lot of young adult fantasy isn't. Young adult fantasy, I think, tends to focus on like the relationships and the characters more often, whereas this one definitely has that aspect to it, but it also really focuses on the world and the politics of the world. So it has both of those aspects, and the fact that it's not confusing at all, I think make it really, really great if you're trying to go from reading young adult fantasy to adult fantasy. The next recommendation I have is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is a post-apocalyptic, slightly dystopian novel, but essentially in this book there is this plague that has kind of wiped out the entire human population, except except for a very few number of people who are remaining. And the book takes place in several different timelines. So with the different timelines, we have the one set timeline, which is post the plague, that takes place, I think, 20 years after the plague. And we follow around this group of people who have created a theater troupe. And essentially they go from like the remaining settlements that have been established after the plague, and they perform Shakespeare for these different people. And then the other timeline takes place right before the plague, and then several years before the plague, and we follow around like three or four different characters and their stories prior to this plague wiping everybody out. I know that sounds a bit confusing and it can get a little bit confusing, so you do have to pay attention while you're reading it, but if that's something that you can do and you enjoy multiple perspective and multiple timeline stories, then I really think you'll enjoy this one. But the reason I think that this one works is kind of a transitional adult novel, even though I'd put this one higher up on, like, after you've read a couple of adult novels, maybe read this one because it's not, like, as close to YA as some of the other ones that I've recommended on this list. But mostly I think it's because our main character is someone that we follow for a very long span of time, so we really get to see her development and we get to see her growth, which is a theme that's really present in a lot of YA and something that I think is very relatable in this one, even if you are a teenager. But in terms of its like more adult themes, it's really a story about humanity and how humanity can survive. But it also requires you to like think very critically while you're reading it sometimes and like go back and reread sections just to make sure that you understood what was going on. I don't mean to say that it's like confusing in that way, but if you're like me and you really like to sink your teeth into a book and truly understand what it's about and analyze like every single line, this is something that I think you'll really enjoy and get really invested into. Moving on to the next recommendation, this time I have a historical fiction book for you all, and that is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, and I just have the dust jacket right now. <laughs> this is a World War II historical fiction novel that takes place during the invasion of France by Nazi Germany. We follow the perspective of two different characters, and once again, similar to Station Eleven, over a very long span of time. One perspective follows around the story of this young German boy who then turns into a Nazi soldier, and then the other perspective follows this young blind French girl as she grows up through this invasion of France. Their stories eventually do converge and we get to see that interaction, but really it's about their two individual stories and how this war affects them in very different and sometimes similar ways. So clearly thematically this is a very 
very heavy, heavy book, which obviously a lot of young adult does deal with, but I don't think it tackles the same kind of topics, or it doesn't tackle like World War II and historical fiction in exactly the same way as adult novels have the liberty to. But again, I think this one's a great transitional book because you're getting to see these two young people grow up into their adulthood and see the way that the world has affected them. And then again, this is just another one of those books that really lets you sink your teeth into it and analyze every single line, which is something that I clearly love to do. <laughs> so if you want something that's heartwarming and just devastatingly beautiful, this is definitely one that I would recommend, especially if you want to read more historical fiction, which tends to generally just be more adult. I don't know if there's that much YA historical fiction. Usually it's like fantasy and it's like urban fantasy. So there isn't that much young adult historical fiction, at least that I'm aware of. So this one I think would be a great one if you want to get into that genre. Okay, so the next book on this list, you had to see this coming. There's no way that I was going to make a video about adult books and not include this book on this list. And that book is, of course, The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Are you sick and tired of me recommending this book like every other video? Well, too bad, because I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> the Night Circus, if you are new here and unaware, is my all-time favorite book. And it is a fantasy novel that takes place over a very long span of time, following the perspectives of multiple different characters and in a lot of different settings. <laughs> But the book starts out in the 1870s in London, and essentially the main story follows the plot of these two magicians who are in a competition with one another, but they don't know that they're in a competition with one another. Like, they don't know who their competition is. And the venue for this competition is this magical night circus. With this one, I think it's the fact that you have so many different complicated timelines and plots and perspectives, and then also the fact that there's like sexual themes in here as well, and some like more graphic scenes also that make it definitely more adult than young adult. But again, there are a lot of characters in here that we also get to see grow up and we get to see them throughout their entire lives. We get to see how they change, how their relationships go. And there's also a romance in this one. So thematically, there is a lot of like similarities between a lot of young adult themes in here. But this book is just pure, pure magic. The writing is unlike anything I have ever read. You will literally feel it in every single one of your senses. You'll be able to smell the food, hear the sounds of the circus. There's just no other way to describe it. You have to read it. So yeah, clearly I cannot recommend this book enough. I love it very dearly and I want everyone to read it. And also I just truly do think that it fits in really well if you're trying to go from reading more young adult to adult because that's what I did. It was one of the very first like true adult books that I'd ever read. So the last book on my list is actually kind of a strange one for me to include because I actually didn't really like this book very much. <laughs> and that's not to say that there was anything like glaringly wrong or bad about it. I just personally didn't really click with it very much, but I feel like I have to include it on this list because I just think it's such a perfect transitional fantasy book. And that book is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This follows the story of this girl who lives in this village, and like every 17 years or so, there is a girl who is chosen from her village by this man named the dragon who is a wizard, and she is chosen to come back and study magic with him at his tower. That's like the best way I can kind of like explain this book because there's like a lot more to it but everything else gives like spoilers away. Personally I didn't enjoy this book that much just because like the magic system and I didn't click very well and I just didn't like the writing style all that much but I definitely think that this is like a perfect book if you're trying to get into adult fantasy. This book is essentially a YA fantasy book that has sexual themes in it. Like, that's the best way that I can put it. The only reason I think that this book is not young adult is because there is sex. So if you want to read an adult book that is like classified as an adult book, but you want to read something that has more like YA themes to it, then this is definitely something I would recommend. It's more adult in the sense that it's far more political than a lot of YA fantasy that I've seen. So there's also that aspect to it. But I know that this is a favorite of like a lot of people. So even though I didn't personally enjoy it that much, I really did want to include it on this list for anyone else who really likes it or for anyone else who might like it. All right, guys, so that is it for my list of recommendations of adult books for young adult readers. Let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of the books that I recommended on this list and if you think that they work for transitional books between the two categories. Also, if you like this video, please let me know that as well because I could definitely make more of these if you guys are interested. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!